everybody and in today's video I'm delighted to be talking about this all new Ramponine Kazani Performance Series tenor sax and I'm joined by none other than huge Ramponi fan Michael who's going to help take me through this. Yes I'm a huge Ramponi fan and I'm excited to dig deep into this performance series. Let's get to it. Jim, let me paint you a picture. So, you're climbing up the Italian Alps. It's a beautiful day. You've just had a delicious pasta meal. You end up in the small village of Quana Sotto. And right there, as a beacon of hope, is the Ramponi Casani factory. Ramponi Casani are one of the oldest manufacturers in Italy. And they are very famous for making the R1 Jazz series saxophones. Now, I have two R1 Jazzes because they are very, very special instruments. They are made in the traditional way, as in the golden era saxophone way, as in a bunch of burly people hammering metal and making saxophones. <laughs> it's incredible. It's very traditional and lovely, big board, very warm instrument. Uh, that's what makes R1 Jazzes so special and also what makes them quite expensive. That and the amount of materials, copper, bronze, silver, bro that very thick brass. Which is why the Ramponi factory decided to think about how they can modernise a, a new model as well as fine tune the experience as a whole, which is why they came up with this, the performance series. Well, I agree with all of that, exactly. Cue me and an explanation as to what this performance series is actually doing. Yeah, give it to me. Okay. So, as you say, they want to fine-tune that experience and make it more affordable for a wider variety of players. Um, and what they have done, and you can plainly see it here, it's a much more standardised finish. Um, we've just got a, a, a standard gold lacquer, albeit a beautiful cognac lacquer. So it's not, you know, the standard yellow lacquer that we often see on many modern saxophones, but they've gone for a, a deep kind of gold, luscious lacquer here. And there is one finish and there is one model. So as you've just mentioned there, they have all these bespoke finishes, these heavy platings, the golds, the silvers, the, the copper base metal, the solid silver base metal. This has a brass base metal, and then it has this simple lacquer finish. And that allows Ramponi to mass produce this instrument, not in a mass, not in like the hundreds of thousands or whatever, but in terms of a comparison to their other bespoke models, they can certainly um, mass produce it more so. And also what they have done with this, and this is really the key point to make about this instrument, is they have altered the bore geometry. Mm. So rather than having that famous wide bore that Ramponi Kanzani are famous for, they've gone for a more standard geometry to allow this saxophone to, to play much more freely. It's a very free-blowing instrument. And the idea being that because they're bringing the price down and making it more affordable, they also thought it would make sense to introduce this instrument to a wider audience and therefore produce a board geometry that has more of a wide appeal again. So they're the two key things that they've done with this instrument. Oh, that's fantastic, but I need to know how it sounds. So Jim, play me some saxophone. <laughs> Okay, so I know that this has got a more traditional standard bore shape compared to the standard R1 jazzes, but there is still such a wonderful body to this sound. Did you feel that when you were playing it? I did. So I was already prepared for the idea that the fact that it has a, a, a narrower bore, I was assuming I wasn't going to get that same multi-dimensional sound that Ramponi is so famous for. 
And I would say it's true that an element of that is reduced because it is a standard, a more standard ball geometry. But I still feel that there's a real element of warmth and core in the sound that is sort of smacks of the, the Ramponi sound that you know we have just described, um, which I absolutely love. Um, and then tied in with that, because it has this narrower bore dimension, the sound, for me, this is the key aspect about this instrument that I love, so it's very free-flowing. It's, uh, it's, it doesn't have that same resistance, so the sound just kind of shoots through the instrument. So you still get that lovely Ramponi character in the sound, albeit without that same extreme sort of thickness that you get with the, the R1 models. Um, so, you, so you still get that sound, but at the same time it flows through and you can, you can just sort of do more with it because it flows through the instrument so beautifully. Yeah, so would you say this model is obviously more free-blowing? Would, would you say it's an easier thing to wrestle than the Ramponis? Because I love the Ramponi instruments, but some of them can be a little bit, you need a little bit more time to get used mm. to them because of the dimensions, because of how unique they are. Yeah. Would you say that the fact that it's a bit more standardised is an advantage over... It, the R1 in some way. Yeah, I think it depends on the player. So um, there's, there's an aspect of the standard boutique R1 models that's quite niche that requires a player to have, you know, a good lung capacity, the, the ability to really push a wall of sound through an instrument. And some players like that, but they're probably more in the minority, those players. I would say the majority of players prefer an instrument where the sound can shoot through with a little less resistance. You still need resistance, you see, need a certain amount of that in order to derive your own personal sound, and you do get that with this, but there's certainly less resistance with this model. So I think on balance, it appeals to a, a, a wider spectrum of players from that point of view. So in summary, this horn is gonna to appeal to a wider spectrum of players because it's got that more free blowing, but those yeah. R1s have got that extra quality in tone that something like this cannot replicate. Yeah, absolutely. So another factor that they've looked at is the key work, because on the R1 jazz models, uh, the key work, again, it's bespoke, it's got this heavy plating. For some players, it can feel a bit different compared to the sort of very sleek Japanese style key work. Um, the Ramponi uh, R1s is, can feel a bit heavy. So what's the verdict on this performance series? Yeah, the key work is a lot lighter. As you say, you have that chunkiness with the R1 saxophones. And I think that, again, they've gone for that more sort of um, standardized model where they're going to appeal to a wider bunch of players. And so naturally everything just flicks off the fingers. It's got that buttery feel to it. It's very light and feathery and, and more standard feeling. It, for, for me it feels like a, a sort of Yanagizawa but a slightly lighter Yanagizawa, you know, when you, because Yanis for me actually have a, sl a slightly initially sort of stiff feel straight out, of the, in out quite, of the box. Yeah. Either bedded in or you can even have them lightened off a little bit. This feels like a lightened off Yanni for me, if, if you like, which I quite like because I've got a Yanni, I had it lightened off. Anyway, um, it, it does naturally feel great to me. Some players prefer that heavier feel, the one, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, I you, need to play dinner plates when I'm yeah. playing saxophone. <laughs> Yeah, I find it amazing that the different viewpoints, the fact that people do like to play dinner plates, they like to really push against something, feel the physical presence of the keys. And other players, more myself, I prefer that feeling of just having that buttery feel so you can kind of move through technical passages more easily. Does that affect the way you play the instrument as well as you approach it? I, I think it does. Well, for, for me, um, I have um, an element of paranoia if an instrument is like, as you say, the dinner plates, I like that one, where you kind of feel like, I'm not gonna go for this passage because I know that I'm just gonna come unstuck halfway through it. Whereas if something is beautifully light and very even as this instrument is, you kind of, it just sort of instills an element of confidence so you feel like you can just let it go and it will happen naturally for you. That's my feeling with this instrument anyway. Amazing. <laughs>
So Jim, in conclusion, who is this saxophone for? Well, I think what Ramponi have done here is they have successfully produced a saxophone that is going to sit nicely in that bracket of those well-known upgrade instruments, the semi-professional instruments such as the Yamaha 62 model, the Yanagizawa W01 series, uh, the Selma, Axos, those instruments there, they aren't the extremely expensive professional instruments, but they're still regarded as you know, heavyweight professional instruments. It is now in that sort of affordability bracket. And so while it might not have that extreme sort of multi-dimensional sound that we mentioned earlier that the R1 series, the very expensive Ramponis have, what it does have is it still has a really interesting core sound. And when you compare it with those models just mentioned there, I think you might find it quite an interesting test. And I would bet that this instrument, for many of you, may come out on top against some of those instruments. Yeah, exactly that. For me, it's like getting those AW, uh, TW01s and of other instruments, but you get all the romance of owning a Ramponi Kazani, which they are, for me, the most romantic instruments on the market. I just, I love everything about them. and, and it Again, for me, that that very complex multiphonic sound from the R1 series is always going to shine through. But this performance series is a very, very serious piece of kit, which I'm already side-eyeing secretly. Don't tell my wife. Shh. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching today. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe and write in the comments below. Tell Jim what you think of his playing. Amazing, obviously. And tell Jim all about the performance series so he makes sure to get loads in order. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.